Makes me glad I erased that PowerPoint I was going to bring today. I go to a lot of places. I send the PowerPoints ahead. And I've learned, and Jack, you probably learned this, when you travel places, you pick places to sit. And with my work at International Gospel Hour now, a lot of things have changed in the three years since I've seen you. And now I travel to places, and I look for four things. A pillow, a quilt, a throw, or a footstool. If I see one of the four, I just keep moving forward. Then I had to look for tape. And rope, set here, don't set here. That X, you can't set here. That X, you can set here. Finally, I just gave up. No matter where I go, I just go to the front row. Nobody sits on the front row. Well, Gary, but you're working tonight. so. But it is good to be with you, Willette, how thankful we are for the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the love of our Father. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. How thankful we are. John said that in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Later in 1 John, chapter 4, we are reminded how that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10. The love of God cares for us, and the love of God corrects us. In Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23, Jesus said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within... Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a man. If something comes from within, it had to enter in first. That's why Solomon warned us in Proverbs 4.23 to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Early in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10, when wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. Our loving Savior, our loving Father, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, proved His love over and over again for His people, for His children. God loves us and cares for us. And tonight we are going to see His love evident in a way of warning. If you walk out the door tonight and you come up to me and tell me I enjoyed that lesson, I'm going to ask you what lesson you listened to. I've got to confess to you folks, there was no joy in the preparation of what we are going to discuss. Sometimes... The tough things need to be addressed. It is not an easy subject. It is a troubling subject tonight that's part of the ethical issues of which you are addressing. These moral issues that we see every lesson and the theme, the Christian and ethical issues. Have you ever thought that the warnings that are in the Scripture were written to the churches or even in the Old Testament unto Israel, God's people. Tonight we are going to study a subject that is not a joyous subject. But if you'll bear with me, we're going to do our best to present the whole counsel of God, Acts 27.20. And tonight the subject assigned to me is the Christian and pornography. It is not a pretty picture. 
If we define pornography, sexually explicit pictures, writings, or other material whose primary purpose is sexual arousal, the presentation or production of this material. That's the American Heritage Dictionary. Folks, I am going to be as gracious as I can with words tonight, but I will tell you this. It's a shade back this side and completely removed away from using euphemisms or using bad language. And number two, if we don't deal with it, Satan and his world out there will be more than happy to. So tonight, let's consider this very solemn subject. It is not pleasant. But folks, in light of our introduction, we must protect our hearts and we must protect our souls. The first song that I ever led as a little boy publicly was out of the old Christian hymns number three, number 338. You never forget your first song. And that song was heaven will surely be worth it all. And dear friends, when we think on subjects such as before us tonight, let's be reminded from the very outset that God loves us. God warns us because He loves us. And it's because heaven is will surely be worth it all. It's going to be worth all the sorrows that here befall. And after this life and all its strife, just as the old hymn goes, heaven will surely be worth it all. Tonight, I want you to consider with me the worldly warnings of pornography. Then second, I want you to consider with me the warnings from the Word of God. And then I want you to consider with me the willing and the wanting way. Number one, let's talk about pornography and the worldly warnings. The effect individually. The average age of first exposure to pornography is on the average 11 years old. It is said that 93% of boys and 62% of girls have seen pornography in one way or another. And folks, initial exposure many times is by accident. It's an accidental thing. For example, children researching for a school paper. And allow me to parallel this with a story over 20 years ago when a brother in the Lord desired to send an email to the president at the White House. Now, like I said, this is over 20 years ago. Internet is still relatively new. And the majority of your websites ended with .com. So this brother in the Lord put in the search blank, whitehouse.com, and he got an eyeful. He got up, walked into the living room, his wife looked at him, and said, what in the world is the matter? The look on your face. And he told her, I went to whitehouse.com to send the president an email, and that's not what it is. His wife looked at him and said, yeah, that's a porn site. It's caused a lot of problems. Children would research the White House for a school paper. And over the past 20 years, that site has moved away. And I read recently, it's moved back to adult content. I did not go there to find out. And neither should you. I heard about a preacher researching the subject to preach like I am. And boy, did I keep this in mind. He accidentally went to a site that he innocently thought was a site of research about the facts and figures of pornography, especially on internet. And when it popped up, he got an eye full. Folks, it's like a billboard. It pops up. It gets attention. And it's just like anything you and I see. Once we see it, it's there. But we have the charge to protect our hearts and our souls. Speaking today with a beloved friend, a preacher, an elder, a counselor, 
He said, Jeff, you're watching a television show and a scene pops up, not to the extent of pornography, but what we would call a soft porn or a fornication scene. Something pops up. Folks, I'm telling you, if you don't think Satan will use pop-ups to knock us down, he will. And we need to be on guard. I know of a preacher that returned to his office in the church building after his vacation, cranked it up, was starting to work, saw a link in the history he did not recognize. When he hit it, oh boy, did he get an eyeful to the point of nauseation. The effect individually, it will come looking for us. We have to be on guard. The effect in families. The United States Department of Justice years ago said, never before in the history of telecommunications media in the United States has so much indecent and obscene material been so easily accessible by so many minors in so many American homes with so few restrictions. That's the United States Department of Justice. That is a realm of our government. Her name is Dr. Patricia M. Greenfield. Department of Psychology, UCLA, quote, A warm and communicative parent-child relationship is the most important non-technical means that parents can use to deal with the challenges of the sexualized media environment, including peer-to-peer -peer sh file sharing networks. In addition, open parent-child channels for communicating about sexual and media experiences, sex education at home or school, and parental participation with children on the Internet are constructive influences. For boys already at risk for antisocial behavior, parents should carefully monitor and severely limit access to pornography on file sharing networks and elsewhere. Folks, did you catch what she grasped right there? She is saying, and here's what is amazing, the world will warn us. The world! And when the world warns us, guess who was in front of the warning to start with? What I just shared with you are the importance of parents to children. May I ask a question? Is that not Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 and following, that you rise up in the morning, you walk it by your way, when you lie down, when you rise up, and in Ephesians 6 and verse 4, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, don't drive them to the point of anger away, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? You know, it's amazing to me how the world seems to get it but we in the church are, are not quite grasping it. Researchers, further, researchers have found in general that parental involvement in closeness has a huge impact on the mental and emotional health of their children later in life. Folks, I will tell you, there, there are things that I think of my mama and daddy that still stick with me today. Very quickly, gun control laws. May I tell you about daddy's gun control law? Daddy had a shotgun. Shotgun stayed in the bedroom closet. He told me, he said, my son, that is not a toy. And if you aim a gun, you better be ready to fire it. And that is not a toy, and you don't play with it. And if you put your hands on it, I will wear you out. Folks, best gun control law that was ever made in this world. He taught me that a gun is not a toy. And the heart was instructed to me, that is not a tool that you would take to school. Folks, a lot of times, there were guns in the back of trucks when I went to school. We talked about guns during recess. You never thought about getting a gun out and going to school and shooting somebody. If you did, you were a sissy. If you had to settle something, 
and you settled it with something other than your fist, you were marked as a sissy. You'd rather take a whipping than be marked as a sissy. At least you fought fair. Folks, when we look at the importance of families, individually, it's out there, it will come after us. We can hit it before we realize it, and then Satan has his ways of saying, well, you saw it once, it doesn't matter. We have to be careful. Families, their influence. How about the effect religiously? Warnings from the world. These are surveys, folks. That 64% of self-identified Christian men, 15% of self-identified Christian women view pornography at least once a month. Latest studies, one in three Americans seek it out once a month. It is a male and a female issue, folks. Male is more percentage, but female is growing. Paul Fishbein, the founder of Adult Video News, said this, Porn doesn't have a demographic. It goes across all demographics. Now, folks, if I were to stop the lesson right now and just take what we have learned here, would that not be enough? The world will acknowledge its dangerous, its addictions, and what it does and how it affects everyone and even our souls. Folks, I'm not pointing a finger because when I do, there's three pointing back at me, but we would be hard-pressed in this room to find someone who is not viewed, come across it, hit upon them, pornography. Let's just be honest. Growing up, there were guys that might slip a magazine into the bathroom at school. Hey, man, have you seen this? Now, I'm not pointing fingers, folks. This is the world we live in. What can we do? We see the warnings from the world. Let's go back to the Word of God. If we see what God says and we see we need to be careful, let's look at this. Matthew 5, 27 through 30 still preaches. It's still there. Matthew 5, 27 through 30. Jesus said, You have heard it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Folks, we've researched this text. Jesus is not talking about self-mutilation every time something happens, but Jesus speaks of the importance that if something is there, something will take you away, then you need to remove what that situation is and more on that as we go on but folks again I would dare say looking at figures and all the vast majority of us in this room at one time or another have dealt with this and folks don't start throwing stones I'm going to allow an expert on the matter to talk he's such an expert folks that he watched a man get stoned on behalf of Christ and called himself the chief of sinners. Paul said this in Romans 7, 22-24. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul knew of his challenges, of his weaknesses. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 3 through 7, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. 
because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testify, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. He called us in holiness. What we have looked at is the warnings of Christ. We have also noted the war within us, the battle that is there, and how Satan will come after the child of God. He's got his children. He wants to come after those that he does not have. And Paul, when he said, here's how you should look at this. God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. We need to change our thinking. James 1.13 James 1, 13, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then what lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Now folks, that takes us back to Matthew 5. Man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That lust could be for pride. That lust could be for money. That lust could be for sexual matters that lust could be that desire he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed well everybody is going to be tempted how do we deal within that and then the danger when lust hath conceived it brings forth sin sin when it's finished brings forth death it's not a pretty picture and dear friends pornography cannot fulfill the promises that it makes it escalates it is astounding of the addiction therein. And that's nothing new. Romans 1, 18-32 speaks of how individuals love the creation more than the Creator. And how you see them going further and further and further after their own lust, their own desires, their own way. Ephesians 4, 31-32. Folks, if I can interject... A beautiful text here. Remember verse 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Put away from you. Folks, that defeats right there. Well, that's just the way that I am. I can't help it. Yes, you can. Because God said you can. And there are times, folks, where you have to put things away. And now look in turn what He replaces. Be kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Folks, we have the choice here. But we realize it is a challenge. Take two of the Bible's strongest people. If Paul referred to himself as the chief of sinners in 1 Timothy 1.15, and yet you see what he said of the battle that he faces, and King David's relationship with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11 and 12, if that brought rebuke, then dear friends, we are not above Satan and us falling prey to pornography. I don't know who Bill Perkins is, but I'm going to quote him. He said, if you think you can't fall into sexual sin, then you're godlier than David, stronger than Samson, and wiser than Solomon. If that fits you, will you please stand? I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. I didn't want to ask people to stand and me stand here. So friends, that's the warnings from the Word. Now, let me get this right. If the world warns me of the dangers of it, folks, I've told you this hasn't been a most pleasant lesson. Of all the places to come, one of my many homes, and I love coming to Willette, what a subject that I had to deal with. But I love you and you love me and we're in this together. So if I see the warnings of the world and I see the warnings from God's Word, let's look at the willing and the wanting way. What do we do? Would you look at John 5 with me? 
As you turn to John 5, I'm going to give you three words in a moment. Say, seeking, and set. Say, seeking, and set. I'm going to come back to those in a moment. Look at John 5, 1 through 6. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Folks, when we study a subject like this, and it's easy to get entangled therein, do you want to be made well? Do you want to leave tonight saying, if I don't deal with this, it will deal with me? Now, the, four, the three words. The willing and wanting way dealing with this. Number one, say your prayers. Never, ever under, underestimate the power of of prayer in our lives. Brother Honeycutt, God created us, didn't He? Sure did. Brother Hugh Wayne, God loves us, doesn't He? God wants to hear from His children. Will the church say amen? Yes, He will. Yes, He does. Did God create the world and everything therein in six days? Did God cause a worldwide flood to destroy this earth and start anew? Did God bring forth His Son from that grave after that crucifixion, after all that scourging, that suffering, that death He died? Did He bring Him forth the third day and He's on the right hand of the Father? Yes, He did. Amen. God is powerful, isn't He? Then as His child, I'm going to call upon His power. We need to be praying people. Daniel probably had it right, opened that door and prayed daily, multiple times. We need to pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, or chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Folks, hold to that verse. Well, I don't know how anybody can do that. I, well, well, wait a minute. Wherefore? Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. But look how verse 13 hooks right there with it. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But I love the next one. But God is faithful. The God who created, the God who created me, the God who created you, the God who resurrected His Son, when I pray to God, God is faithful. I need your power, God. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Remember, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. But God is faithful who will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God is faithful. God will not allow. God will make a way. That's why I like to call this the wanting and willing way. Do we want and are we willing? He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able. How? Well, folks, He provides the way of escape so that we may be able to bear the temptation. When we are tempted and that desire to do something we should not do, whether it be pornography or anything else, but I'm going to keep it at pornography. That's our subject tonight. When we are tempted there, do we look for the way of escape? Father, I believe Your Word and I know your divine power will help me. Please grant me the way of escape. 
Why not make that plea unto Him? Help me, Father. You are faithful. You will give me that way. Folks, sometimes we take that verse 13 where the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. Folks, that's not what that verse teaches. Not one's upside down the other. What he says is that we are able to bear when he makes that way of escape, we are able to bear the temptation that is upon us. God said, I will provide it. Therefore, let us be individuals to go boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4, 16. When things draw near to us, let's draw nearer to God. Would that not make sense? Would that not work? And folks, you know when you think about it, we can never pray too much. And don't ever think about praying too little. Folks, we need to rely on that power of prayer to help us in these temptations and to help us in these matters. Here's number two. Seek the things that are better. Remember who we are, that we are in Christ, and He charges us to guard our hearts. Job said in Job 31.1, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Psalm 101.3, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. Everybody's jumping up and down about Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Folks, I'm going to make a confession and a repentance that I did long ago. Miss Renita and I went to see Top Gun Maverick. Wish we would have never went. Plot, good, yes. Language, horrible. And we should have got up and walked out of the theater and we'll know better next time. Now, if you went to see Top Gun and you want to argue with me, you better be ready to defend cussing in God's house, if you will. Folks, remember what Paul told the church in Ephesus in Ephesians 4.20? He told them, You have not so learned Christ. If you have indeed you have heard Him, have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt in the spirit of your mind, according to the deceitful lust rather, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Jack, this clock said 733. Another clock here says 737. I heard that bell. Y'all, I'm going home tomorrow. Will you bear with me? Please. Folks, seek the things that are better and then let's set forth from changes. Please let me get this in. Folks, we need to take our computers back. Put safeguards on them. Block things. CovenantEyes.com is probably one of the best tools that we can use. They're not members of the Lord's Church, but their research, their guidance has brought millions out of the addiction of pornography. Yes, folks, it is addicting. Time does not permit to look at how all that works. How about Bark US? Bark, like a dog barks. B-R-A-K, B-A-R-K dot U-S. Bark US for children. It monitors text messages, YouTube, emails, 30 plus different social networks for potential safety concern so busy parents can save time and gain peace of mind. He's an elder in the church. He gave his oldest his very first iPhone last year and he made it very clear. He said, please tell that audience, cell phones and iPhones are not a right, they are a privilege. Protect your families. No passwords on devices. No private time for your kids with their devices. Sometimes knowing you can check on them at any time is all the deterrent they need. Invest in protecting your computers and network. The tools to protect your families are out there and there are no excuses. I can share with you the website. I can share with you the link. If you want to give me your email or work it any way to me, or you can go to YouTube and put in Focus Press, How to Address a Porn Addiction. The folks at Focus Press has done a lot of work. Folks, we need to make certain that we are using our iPhones for good. I would throw this at you. Husbands, never be afraid if your wife picks up your phone. And wives, never be afraid if your husband picks up your phone. And kids, when mom and dad ask you for your phone... Mom and Dad, I'd go with that bark.us in a heartbeat. Because a lot of times, 
It's what comes after them that we need to be aware, not what they are into. Well, my kid is a good kid. Good. Keep him that way. Keep her that way. But let's move our kids from good kids and make them faithful kids. Amen? Faithful to our God. Satan will take them through the ringer, folks. And it's time we take it back. Here's the second thing on setting forth changes. Know your triggers. This is called trauma triggers. In other words, why did this happen? When you sin, ask yourself, why did this happen? Why did I do this? In pornography, what happens? Folks, if you remember earlier, we talked about working on the heart. My dad retired from Ford Glass Plant. Told me a story about a piece of machinery that broke down three times and they fixed it. But the third time, Daddy said, why don't y'all figure out what's making it break down and fix that and it takes care of the problem. Daddy did so. They did so. Folks, sometimes we've got to back up. His name is Roy Kyle. He lived a life that was a life of challenge of alcoholism. He struggled with it and he was living faithful to the Lord and standing against it in his latter couple of years before he left. He told me, he said, Brother Jeff, I got a tiger in a cage. He's right here. He said, if I don't poke that tiger, if I don't aggravate that tiger, and if I don't open the door, I don't have to worry about him. He's going to lay there and be fine. He said, but if I go somewhere that stirs and pokes that tiger, he said, if I go into a beer joint to see a friend, can't do that. Beer joint, that's redneck for nightclub. And then he said, I can't go up into the country when I would go and drink. It's those triggers, what's doing it. You know, Joseph fled in Genesis 39. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, we're taught to flee useful lust. Folks, let's confess our faults one to another and pray one for another. There may be that accountability partner, and I see this a lot through the study of the Word of God. To confess our faults one to another, pray one for another that will be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And to bear one another's burdens. Let's not cast stones, let's lift one another up on the rock. ChristianCounselingServices.us is a good source. Jerry Martin is a beloved brother and friend of mine. He refers people and helps them all that he can because it's time that our congregations give this attention. I stand before eight of the finest men that serve as elders that I trust and love you dearly. Good brothers, it's time to sit down and say, if we have the problem that is serious here at Willette and the odds are there are problems here. It's everywhere looking at the odds and everything. Folks, in the denominational world, 93% of the pastors say it's a problem. 7% have a solution. We have got to change that. And we've got to address it before it gets worse. Dear friends, I got up here tonight and went as full speed as I possibly could because there was much to say. The things that I've mentioned, the links that I've shared, if you'd like them, write your email down, hand it to me. I'll stick it in my pocket. When I get home, I'll send you every link. I'll send you everything that I have here, whatever can help you. I'll be more than happy to. And with that being said, let's have a word of prayer. Then our invitation will be in just a moment. Father, please help us. We have the warnings. We're suffering in this old world. Father, help us to help each other to stand against this plague of pornography, to draw closer to Your Word. In the name of Christ, Amen.